I uh, thought we played really tough and really hard and, and made the plays down the stretch we needed to. Um, you know, hats off to Texas State. They're a really good team. And it took, a, took a, our, our best effort uh, to, to beat them. So um, we'll get ready here to go to New Orleans. We just keep doing what we do. We just keep playing better and, and uh, just try. We, we're going to try to play better in the tournament than we played tonight. We tried to play better tonight than we did last week, so we're just gonna we're just gonna try to keep taking our game to another level, and uh, we'll get done what we need to get done if we do that. Uh, you know what? I, I think it's it, they know they know each other's games, and so they know what to look for. They know where Kip likes the ball. They know where how to get Tiandre shots. They know how to get Andreas shots. They, you know things like that. You just kind of get better and better and better as you go on your journey, right? And and. Um, and then shooting the ball, ma ma making shots. You know, these guys have put in the time. I told them at some some point we're going to make shots, and you know we got good shooters, so we're uh, we're playing with a lot of confidence. Yeah, well, both those guys can really score. We've known that all along. Um, you know, in coaching them, it's been fun to coach them. It, it, you know, it, they'll tell you it hasn't been easy. I mean, we, we've coached them hard, and they've taken the coaching and and. Um, but when you got two guys that can score the basketball, it helps. And uh, and now that now that they've learned how to manage games, they've learned how to start games, they've learned how to make the right plays and play hard. Most of all, they're they're just individual talent is showing through. So it's it's comforting when you got guys that play with big onions. It takes a little pressure off the pitcher, it takes a little pressure off your team, and I'd like to add a little to it. You know, I don't like to just settle for that, but you got to give their bullpen credit. They did a really good job. Oh, it felt great. You know, uh, I didn't have my best stuff today, but I just try to give the best opportunity for my team to get a win and just grind every batter and every hitting. <laughs> but it was a good opportunity. You know, our hitters came out well and grinded everything out, and I'm proud of them, I'm proud of our, all of our guys here. One. And here's a high fly ball from Menjarez deep into left field. That wind is helping it out. It's off the wall. Dominguez. Darren Thomas is sending Dominguez for third. No play. Dominguez scores. Just one of those days where you just have to compete. It's not going to be perfect. The wind's going to muck it up a little bit. And, uh, but we came out on top, and Andrew gave us two, which is huge. I thought Gooch was good out of the pin. Pono gave us everything he had, so scored just enough. What a great game. What an incredible atmosphere. Um, and that's the first thing that I want to say is just thank you to our um, fans and our students. Oh, my gosh, these girls have worked so hard, and they have deserved um, to play in front of – um, people that appreciate them and that um, that they've been working so hard for and man I just want to say thank you so much to um, everybody that came and, and man I hope they'll load up and come over to TCU on Saturday because we will have a great um, advantage if they will. Um, I thought that our kids responded. They didn't get down when they lost the lead. Um, they didn't panic. They came together. We all kind of kept our heads in the in the timeout and didn't blow a gasket. Um, I'm talking about myself more than anything. <laughs> um, but we just had some fighters on the floor. I mean, these two right here, I'm so proud of them. I thought all of our kids really played hard, but that might be the best defensive performance I've seen Diane have since she's been at UTA. And I just, I, I, it, this is, feels so great. I mean, first of all, it's win 100 for us at UTA since our coaching staff has been here. Um, it's win number 24, which I believe ties a program record. Um, it's our first postseason win um, in, in the WNIT, and, and I think, period. Um, and those are just so many firsts, and we talk all the time about leaving legacies. And, man, this group of seniors is just leaving in a tremendous legacy, and they're, they're leaving it to um, underclassmen that are going to be able to carry it on. And that's what I have loved so much about this, this season. 
Um, it's really big because, like she said, it's our first postseason win, and we really don't want to be done yet. So it's fun, and it's really hitting me that I'm a senior and it's about to be over. So I want to go as far as we can. At this point in the year, when you're playing in March, it's fun. You know, there's there's no pressure. Um, it's just it's just everybody's getting to play and play your hearts out and see who gets to, to keep playing the longest. We want to play in the postseason every year, and at the end of the day, yes, we want to play in the NCAA tournament, and, and we're going to get there. I mean, it's baby steps, but the whole point of us playing in the WNIT was to get experience in the playoffs, and, and we're getting that, and now our kids are understanding what that feels like, and they're going to be really excited about that. And it just sets a tone and a standard of, of what we want this, this program to do every year. time um, you know it's about the performances and getting ourselves ready to run it's the most important and uh, we're looking forward to getting past today and getting, uh, getting, getting started with the rest of our season something bigger than ourselves so <laughs> the kids are amazing they brought a lot of energy for us so they helped us out a lot so thank you to Swift Elementary <laughs> the in-between inning entertainment that we get especially when the kids start dancing up there I, I love having the, the stands filled up <laughs> If you want to get better at wheelchair basketball, UTA is a good place to go. Rose Hollerman is one of many world-class athletes that go through UTA's Women Wheelchair Basketball Program, known as the Lady Moving Mavs. She is a two-time Paralympian who competed in both the 2012 and 2016 Paralympics. That was the, definitely the coolest moment I've had in my life. The Lady Movement Maps program has been a training ground for world-class athletes. When you look at a national team, there's only 12 positions on the team. So when you think that one program within the U.S. has the capabilities to put seven players on that team, to even get a look at seven players is absolutely wonderful. The team's coach explained what it's like to see his team compete on such a high level. It's awesome just to hear UTA get that recognition over and over out there on that stage that we're producing some of the best players that are out there right now. When she came to UTA, the Lady Moving Mavs had no athletic scholarships to provide. We didn't have a lot of things for them at that point. We just had a dream. So hers was awarded to her by the men's wheelchair basketball team. If it wasn't for them in the very beginning, we wouldn't even have Rose here. As a Paralympic athlete, Rose sees herself as a role model for people with disabilities and understands the impact 
that disabled sports have on their lives. One of my favorite quotes from someone is once they get from their day chair and they get into a sports chair, it's like they put on their running shoes for the first time. Mason Brighton, UTA News. Outside AT&T Stadium, Cotton Bowl signage can be seen almost everywhere. Inside, the Kilgore Rangerettes are practicing for their halftime performance at the 83rd Cotton Bowl Classic. This year will mark the 69th consecutive performance for the Rangerettes at the game. The Rangerettes captain shared what it means to her to be a part of this team. Being a Rangerette has taught me to cherish every single moment. I'm a huge fan of the Cowboys and the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, and so first and foremost, I was like, oh my gosh, the AT&T Stadium, I've never been here before, so that was really cool, but being able to come and do this and keep the tradition alive and stay part of such an amazing organization that supports us and we support them has been a really cool opportunity. One of the team's lieutenants even has a deep bond with the Rangerettes and the Cotton Bowl Classic. I think the team is really excited. Um, this is one of our favorite performances every year. Um, no matter what opportunities are presented, this is always one of our favorites. I know how big tradition is to Rangerettes, and I understand how important it is and to have performed in the Cotton Bowl for, I think, almost 70 consecutive years is such an amazing opportunity. I love coming every year. I've come to almost every Cotton Bowl um, since I've been alive, and it's just such a wonderful experience. 